Welcome to another issue of Tamhana on random electronic things. Today, my back is bent because I've been carrying approximately one grand worth of electronic books. And today we are going to take a look at the epic question, which book on arms electronics and general electronics is better? Is it Horowitz and Hill or Tietze and Schenk? To answer this, I've entered into my collection. We've got the second edition of the Art of Electronics, the third edition of the Art of Electronics, three issues of Tietze and Schenk, and finally, one copy, which I prize very much, of the book of uh, Seifert on an analog circuits and electronics. He essentially is the Pope of electronics design in the GDR. He trained Kuban and other foraging students and also wrote some books. He has since passed away, so his books are difficult to get, but that's the stack and we're gonna be comparing it. So, this what we've got here are the two most current issues of the series. Tietze and Schenk have since reached the 15th issue, while Horowitz and Hill, well, you see, is the third edition. Thickness-wise, the Tietze and Schenk is much thicker, but it's also smaller, as you can see from the top. And one more interesting thing is the layout. You see, Tietze and Schenk use a traditional German style one block per page layout, while Horowitz and Hill go for two column layout. So in principle, the textual content probably is going to be more or less equal between the two books. Of course, I understand not all of you speak German, but be aware that the 12th edition of Tietze and Schenk has also been translated to English. But what's even more important than the language barrier is understanding the different concept of the book. Tietze and Schenk is calling his book, as you can see, Semiconductor Electronics, while the other book is called The Art of Electronics. So Horowitz and Hill and Tietze and Schenk basically follow different targets. The aim of Tietze and Schenk essentially is to teach you the mathematical models and the complete behavior of semiconductors, while the art of electronics is mainly targeted at teaching you how to really work with these things. One nice example for this is ESD protection, which we are going to look at in the two books now. So, as we see here, see also human body model spike input protection. Let's go and look at one of these references. Well, if just for copyright reasons, I can't show you the whole page, but let's cut the long story short. There are no protection circuits whatsoever on the page that we've been led to by the index. Mucking around a bit further in the third issue led to a passage on input protection for CMOS and TTL logic. And there we also find some basics. We find a human body model explanation and we also find some basic schematics. In the second issue of the book, this information is not to be found at all. There's no chapter on the human body model. Let us look at Tietze and Schenk next. In Tietze and Schenk, we find a basic diode circuit and some basic explanation on a human body model and blah. A really nice way to understand the different philosophies of the two books is to look at the way how they handle bipolar transistors. We see here, in the case of Horowitz and Hill, it's an about 70 pages long chapter which starts out with the transistor man model, which I really like and which I'm gonna show to you here. And then it moves on to Eber's model. And essentially that's that. No further discussion of transistor models takes place. Well, even comparing that to Tietze and Schenk is difficult. They have one chapter dedicated only to models 
And then a separate second part of the book, which looks at the applications. And as you can see, the length of just the basic treatment on bipolar transistors is about two times as long as the one found in Horowitz and Hill. And this basically translates to one thing, namely formulae, formulae, formulae. So if you don't really want to understand detailed how a transistor behaves, I'm not sure whether Tietze and Schenk is the book you want to read. Just for comparison, let's also add in Dr. Seifert. Dr. Seifert takes a completely different approach. He does start out with a few pages on transistor models, but then he actually demonstrates the transistor concepts in a relatively long chapter, which is quite heavily application-based. In my practical experience, I've considered Dr. Seifert very comfortable to read, but sadly, his book, as you can see, it's old and it's not available in English. One thing I really hate about books is if they transform themselves into ads. And this sadly is clearly the case for Horowitz and Hill, for example, when it comes to looking at batteries, where, well, we find the following beauty of a passage. Because this chapter is already, when huge, we defer further discussion of the care and feeding of batteries to chapter 9x in the advanced volume. So, basically, thanks for buying, sucker, we want even more money. There's another hundred bucks you have to wire to us. Thanks for nothing. Let's compare this to Tietze and Schenk, where we find a table explaining different battery types and a bunch of circuits and explaining the topologies and blah, blah, blah. Well, in principle, to be fair, the chapter is not much longer with Tietze and Schenk, but Tietze and Schenk are fair enough not to try and get you to buy an extra book after you already bought their definitely not cheap tome. And I wanted to ask you for a little something small. Basically, why can't you post a comment telling me which book you like the best? Thank you so much. Next up, we are going to look at process computers. Let's assume that you're in the unfortunate position to have received your first ever process computer and you want to find out more about what the SPI bus does. This is a topic I clearly have to hand to the Art of Electronics 3rd edition. It has a very large section dedicated to all kinds of problems related to SPI. So definitely this point goes to Horowitz and Hill. Congratulations to them. One thing where the 15th issue of Tietze and Schenk shines is the coverage of all kinds of RF circuits. You see mixers, HF amplifiers and everything. In fact, Tietze and Schenk even went so far as to add a third author who is dedicated only to RF circuitry. And well, this Dr. Gum is not only available in the 15th part. As you see here, the 12th issue, which conveniently is translated to English, is the first issue of Tietze and Schenk, which comes with a chapter on RF circuits. This mathematical focus is also continued in the discussion of regulators. You see here, P regulator, PI regulator, basically all the regulators one knows and hates from ARMS Electronic 101, you also find them in Tietze and Schenk. And of course, you also find some information on how to build them with realistic circuits, as we see here. Comparing this to the arts of electronics, well, we see a small mention, no mention of P regulators and other stuff. So this point also clearly goes to Tietze and Schenk. And with that, it's time for a conclusion. Well, if money would not be an issue, I know what I would recommend to you. Buy all of the books. Try to get a copy of Seifert to add it in, get a copy of The Art of Electronics and a copy of Teach and Chain. Oh, and learn German. Well, sadly in practice, 
this is not really possible, especially as the books are quite expensive. My personal advice would be, but regarding the out of electronics, you really need to make a decision. Do you need the content on modern process computers and stuff? Or do you rather want more details on traditional analog electronics? If you don't really need the digital stuff, I would rather buy the second edition of the out of electronics, which is quite cheap, and add in TZ and Cheng if you need extra information on mathematical models. People who speak German and who are interested in really, really understanding circuitry will definitely like the 15th edition of Tietze and Schenk. And, of course, Seifert added in as an antiquarian project, if just to honor the GDR.